One thing I hadn't experienced until recently was shooting with an anamorphic lens. Pairing this Sire lens with my GH5 Mark II or GH6 has been an educational, creative and fun experience. To say that shooting anamorphic for the first time was flawless would be stretching the truth, but it's the most fun I've had shooting micro four thirds in a very long time. This is the Sire 35mm f1.8 anamorphic lens for micro four thirds. This anamorphic lens with a 1.33 times squeeze is specifically designed to capture a super wide cinematic aspect ratio and beautiful blue anamorphic flares. When the light hits this lens just right, you get a much more unique look than your standard prime. I've been using this lens now for about three weeks and I've got loads of sample clips and tips to share with you and what I've learned along the way. I'm tipping if you're interested in this lens, you might be new to shooting anamorphic like me, so this video is for you. Before we go any further, a massive thank you to Sire for sending out this 35mm f1.8 anamorphic lens for the review. I really appreciate it. This lens has been a pleasure to use, and rather than just reviewing the image quality, I wanted to focus on who this lens is for and the overall real-world shooting experience. If you've been thinking of getting into anamorphic filmmaking and you shoot micro four-thirds, keep watching. I'll post some links down in the description box so you can check out this lens in your part of the world. Let's get into it. about anamorphic lenses and how they kind of vary from your typical prime. Anamorphic lenses are a creative choice for filmmakers wanting to escape the standard mirrorless look. These lenses produce a drastically different look over the standard zooms or prime lenses typical for hybrid shooting. This Sire lens offers exceptional background compression, unique lens flaring and bokeh, and a fully manual focus workflow that will appeal to folks who might find the autofocus experience boring or unchallenging. Even though this is a 35mm lens for micro four thirds, you get a far wider field of view once it's de-squeezed in post than your standard prime lens. I want to showcase though that there's more to this lens than just beautiful blue flaring. Before we cover the shooting experience, let's cover everything we get in the box. Inside the box is a user manual, a QR code that gives us access to the Sire website, two follow focus and aperture ring accessories, and the lens. The lens came shrink wrapped inside a bag with a silica gel packet. I thought that was an awesome touch. Let's talk about build quality. In the hand, this lens feels fantastic. The Sire 35mm lens is all metal, from the focus and aperture ring to the rear lens element. This high quality lens feels even more robust than my 10 to 25mm Panasonic Leica lens. It is a very different lens to that, but just in terms of build quality, this is an absolute tank. Weighing in at 580 grams, it's not light, but the shooting experience and results made it worth it. At around $500, the build quality is excellent. The focus ring feels fluid under the fingers and the aperture ring is smooth and well controlled. Since this lens is 100% manual and not focused by wire, you can pull focus reliably once you get a feel for it. We get a clickless aperture ring and this will go all the way from f1.8 all the way through to f16. Speaking of focusing, the minimum focusing distance is rated at 90 centimeters, which is not very close at all. While this lens shines for establishing shots, talking headshots, or anything run and gun filmmaking, the minimum focusing distance will make it too restrictive for tight shots or close ups. I found a small hack with this though. My GH5 II and GH6 have pixel to pixel mode, which crops into the sensor, giving you the illusion of a closer focusing distance. While I wish this had a closer focusing distance, this workaround definitely does the job. And if your camera has a digital crop in the menu, then you'll be in business. After shooting with the GH5 Mark II and the GH6, this lens feels far better balanced with the larger GH6 thanks to that extended grip and fatter body. I found it far too front heavy on the GH5 Mark II, but it's not a deal breaker considering the price. 
Whether you have a GH5, GH5S, GH5 II or GH6, this lens is fully compatible with the in-camera de-squeeze feature. Up next, I'm going to show you how to set up your camera for shooting anamorphic. Diving into the menu of your GH6 or GH5 Mark II, you'll need to set the de-squeeze to 1.33 times and shoot in one of the standard widescreen aspect ratios. Another benefit of shooting with the Lumix cameras I mentioned earlier is that you can preview your footage de-squeezed on playback, which is wild. These cameras also allow you to shoot in real time seeing the final result, so you can see it without it all looking squished and weird on the LCD. Once you drop your footage into your editor, you can de-squeeze it to fit your project's timeline. The timeline I was using was a 5107 by 2160 aspect ratio. The aspect ratio of this project is 2.4 to 1. Now don't feel bad if you don't know what this means. I had to do a lot of research before filming with this lens for the first time and outputting this video. Shooting anamorphic throws a lot of new numbers at you, even if you've shot a lot with regular 16 by 9. Next, I wanted to talk about my experience shooting anamorphic for the first time. I had a lot of shots out of focus on my first few attempts, even with the focus peaking on the GH5 II and GH6. I missed focus quite a lot. <laughs> I can highly recommend using an external monitor when shooting anamorphic if you want to nail critical focus. Static shots are generally fine, but when you're trying to nail focus on a moving subject, that's a whole other story. Some external monitors have much more robust focus peaking than you'll find on mirrorless cameras, so keep that in mind if you plan on shooting moving subjects handheld. Now, if you have a follow focus motor, this will drastically improve the overall manual focusing experience, but can you get away with this handheld? Absolutely. All of the samples that you see on screen were shot using the Cirrhi 35mm f1.8 handheld. My favorite results came from pairing the Cirrhi lens with the GH6. The colors and details looked great, here are some examples shot using the GH6. The colors, background separation, and visual look is very impressive, even if I did miss focus here and there. Now let's talk a little bit about low light performance. Thanks to this fast f1.8 aperture, the low light performance was solid. The GH6 gave me the cleanest results when shooting vlog or in the natural picture profile. Let's cover lens flaring and bokeh. The lens flaring is beautiful when the light hits the front element just right. The great news is this lens will only flare with direct light and not always, making it extremely usable yet creative when you want to see the flaring effect. You can clearly see some really great blue flares on this shot. I think it looks great. The bokeh balls have a cat's eye look to them, which is another nice attribute of the look of anamorphic. When it comes to chromatic aberration, I did notice some when shooting in a high contrast situation, but I was expecting this to be the case. An anamorphic cinematic lens like this has character, which is all part of the appeal. The chromatic aberration definitely won't be a deal breaker for most shooters, and if you're looking for a non-technically perfect lens, you'll get a kick out of this. All right, let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts about this Cirrhi lens. At the end of the day, this anamorphic lens is an affordable way to get into cinematic filmmaking. This is a really impressive lens when it comes to getting great subject separation and compression for micro four thirds. This lens will appeal to filmmakers who don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on an alternative option. If you're into the hands-on approach and love shooting manually and you dig the anamorphic look, check out this lens. I'll link it down in the description box below. Thanks to Cray for sending out this lens for the review. I really appreciate it. Again, this has been the most fun I've had shooting micro four thirds in a while. Let us know what you think of anamorphic lenses in the comment section, and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.